You are very disarmingly honest in this. Well, it's a sort of thing taken for granted in India, Your Honor. Now, how long have you been involved with the full chest locums? I started doing occasional shifts about three years ago. How occasional? Perhaps two a week, 12 hours. And you say that um, you each had a shift of six hours a week? Yes. Were you sometimes employed on a shift of 12 hours? No. Hmm. Very well. Thank you, <clears throat> uh, Yes, but recently you've been doing, you have been doing as many as four shifts, haven't you, Doctor? Oh, yes, I've started deputising on Saturdays and yes, Sundays. So you've got a considerable amount of experience in this field. Well, I'm not an experience. No. Now, will you tell the court exactly what happened from the moment you arrived at the Lipton's home on the 25th of May? Yes. Well, I was in the radio car when I received a message that a girl was suffering from stomach pain and was thought to be running temperature. In fact, I was quite close, so the driver took me there. The driver? Yes, Your Honor, it saves a great deal of time if you do not know the area very well. Mm. When I went in, Beverly was in bed and she was running a temperature. Her mother, Mrs. Lipton, told me that Beverly had been in some pain passing water. I then asked Mrs. Lipton to leave the room, but she would not. Now, why didn't you insist that she left? Well, I insisted, but she was too upset that her own GP had not come. I then told Beverly that I would like to examine her, but she shook her head and she said that she was feeling much better. She said that pain came and went and it had gone now. Then I told Mrs. Lipton that I'd like to test a sample of Beverly's urine. And what was the result of this test? I found albumin present. Albumin? Uh, what's that? Most abundant of proteins dissolved in blood. A principal factor in maintaining the osmic pressure of blood. Yes, and this wasn't a positive result? No, not necessarily conclusive in any way. You often find albumin present. It's uh, often an ordinary discharge. Mm. Then I asked Beverly, when was her period due? And she said that she had just had it. Yes. Now, did it enter your head to ask the girl if she was pregnant? Stomach pain, nausea? Oh, yes, that's the kind of question you always think of with a young girl. But you see, her mother was present, and... Uh, I did say to Beverly that, are you quite sure you've had your period? And she said, yes. Yes. Now, Mrs. Lipton claims that she told you that her daughter was pregnant. No, she did not. Now, is, now, is there a chance that she might have told you, but you didn't hear? There's no chance at all. Now, you see, Mrs. Lipton claims that she'd, she'd said Beverly was ten weeks on. Huh? No, she didn't. No. Now, were you in a hurry to leave, Doctor? No. But it's true, isn't it, that you were just in the house a short time? Well, ten minutes from getting out of the car to... Well, you see, Mrs. Lipton was most anxious for me to leave the house. Yes. Now, did the deputising service ever put any pressure on you to be quick on your calls? No, if the call took an hour. I mean, one would never consent to work under such pressure. Did you make it clear that you wanted to examine Beverly? Yes, I did. But Mrs. Lipton said no. Then she added that her husband would not agree. And from the manner he had greeted me on my arrival, I had no doubt. So, you see, they, they, they wanted their own GP. Mm. Well, I, I told Mrs. Lipton that if Beverly's condition had not improved by the following morning, she should call her own GP. Yes. Now, why didn't you refer Beverly to the hospital? Well, I thought the young woman was suffering from urinary tract infection. I thought it was no emergency. Yes. Now, you've you rather played down, haven't you? Played down the reason, uh, the reason why Mrs. Lipton wouldn't let you examine her daughter. <clears throat> I think I explained enough. Now, what were those reasons? Mrs. Lipton was confused. See, I'm, uh, I'm beginning to think that you're, you're trying to protect Mrs. Lipton. Oh. I think I... I've explained enough. Uh, all right. Now, you were with Beverly six minutes or so. Did you rush? No, I did whatever I could. Now, Mrs. Lipton says that you, you ran down the stairs. Did you do that? It's very difficult to run down the stairs. Oh, yes, but did you try? Well, I walked down the stairs briskly, but you see, 
There was no point in my staying in the house when I had done all I could. Thank you, Doctor. Well, Doctor, it's a pity you are not one of the more inexperienced doctors working for the service, because if you had been, you might have sent Beverly to hospital, and she would have been alive today. Yes. Yes. Now, Mrs. Lipton told you her daughter was pregnant, didn't she? No. Are you calling her a liar? Come on. Is she lying? Yes. Why? Because Mrs. Lipton cannot face the fact that her daughter was too <coughs> frightened to tell her. I see. Now, Mrs. Lipton called you to her house and told you she thought there was something wrong with her daughter, did she not? Yes. And then she stopped you examining the girl? Does that make sense? It does. It does? How does it? Because... Because I'm an Indian. Oh, come on, don't try that one. When Mrs. Lipton asked me the nature of examination I wished to make, I explained to her that it would be first of abdominal and then internal. Mrs. Lipton then asked me what I meant by internal, and I explained to her that it will be vaginal exploration. Mrs. Lipton said, no, you... She said, no, you can't do that, you are an Indian. You uh, say you walked down the stairs briskly. Did you slam the front door in your hurry? I slammed the front door because Mrs. Lipton had made me angry. Because she'd asked you to examine her daughter? No, because she would not let me examine her daughter simply because I'm an Indian. I was disgusted. I put it to you that you never suggested an examination. Oh, yes, I did. Because an examination would have taken time. Well, of course it would have taken time. And that is why you refused to examine Beverly. That's the wrong way round. Uh, you had a lot to do, didn't you? Yes, I had calls to make. And you were too busy to examine Beverly, or to listen to her mother tell you her daughter was pregnant. I can only repeat that this is not the case. You had four other calls lined up, didn't you? Yes, I had four calls. And you were rushing them through, in case more came in, and they all started piling up. I was not rushing. Were there two of you on call? My colleague had gone off sick. Doctor sick as well, eh? Yes, flu. Yes, a lot of it about. So you were doing the lot, doing the work of two deputies? Yes. Weren't there also two standby doctors on call? Yes. Did they get a call at all? I... I don't understand. Well, it's perfectly simple, Doctor. Did you manage that six-hour shift on your own? Or did you call in a standby doctor? I managed on my own. Oh, wouldn't it have been better to have called in a standby doctor? I managed. Yes. You like hard work, don't you? Well, I don't mind. There were 20 calls that night. Yes. At one time, there were five lined up. Yes. One of the patients at the end of that list had to wait an hour and a half. Didn't, is that correct? It would have taken the standby doctor an hour. Now, you've said that Fulchester Locums doesn't make any demands on you. Oh, yes, the demands of treating patients with care and concern, yes. But they don't tell you to rush, do they? No, they wouldn't be in service for long if they did. Yes, they're a bit more subtle than that, aren't they? In what way? Well, they're a business company. They use business tactics. They use blackmail. I... I didn't know it was a business tactic. I don't think it's too strong a word. I don't... I, I, I don't know what you mean. No, uh, neither do I, Mr. Cross. Make yourself clear. Well, my lord, in industry, uh, men often work on piecework. The more they do, the more they get paid. If a man's doing the same job over and over again, uh, this is an incentive for the worker. The more he does, the more he earns. Uh, you are following me, aren't you, Doctor? Yes. Uh, to bring a form of piecework into medicine is something only a business interest would think up, and that is what Fulchester Locums thought up, didn't they? No doctor would risk a patient. The temptation was put in front of you, and you grabbed it. No, I did not. And you have the gall to accuse Mrs. Lipton of racial prejudice and lying. 
I'm afraid it is the truth. Hmm. Uh, how were you paid by the deputising service? There was a fee. You were, in fact, paid entirely by the number of no, calls you I made. Said before, the there more was a calls fee. you made, the more you got Am paid. Am I allowed correct? time to answer? There's no point in questioning the witness if you don't give him sufficient time to answer. My lord, just uh, tell the court how you got paid, will you? There was a fee of twelve pounds that was standard and set. You would get it if you were on duty and you made no calls at all. But for each call you made, you get one pound fifty pence. So if you made four calls, you'll still get twelve pounds. But if you made nine calls, then you would lose the basic of twelve pounds and you would be on the call rate, which is one pound fifty. Nine calls would earn you nine one pound fifties, that is thirteen pound fifty pence. So, your six hour shift brought you in what? Thirty pounds? Yes. That works out at five pounds an hour. You're doing a 24-hour week. You're getting what, 120 pounds? No, in fact, I was doing an average of 70 pounds per week. Well, how come you made so much on this one night? The other doctor was off. So, you decided to make a killing, literally. Yes. There was no call for that. That was in bad taste. Do you understand me? My lord. Well, you rushed around, didn't you? Because you were greedy. You wanted all the money you could lay your hands on. And the insidious methods of payment employed by this deputizing service...